This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to The Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast. Since 2015, I am back here in the very fine studios of Pod Populi, podcast for the people. I am at the one in Palm Beach Gardens. It's very nice. Um, I got Chris on the controls. I got McKay watching Chris on the controls. Um, I've not been in this one in a while. It's very nice, and it's a very nice time of year. So quick note before I get into what I want to get into with who I want to get into it with. Uh, The last episode we dropped our much-anticipated, always controversial, um, list of America's worst cities to find love for 2024. A lot of you probably listened to it. Uh, And one email that I got more often in response to it was, wait, almost every year you have Seattle and Denver and um, Philadelphia on the list. They've been winners, losers of that list many, many times, and they didn't make the list this year. Does that mean they've gotten better? And my answer is, Absolutely not. They probably are worse than ever. They are sort of bad cities emeritus until further notice. We just want to give some other... I didn't want to go on and on about how uh, gloomy and miserable the dating scene is in in Seattle again for the ninth year in a row. So uh, consider them just as bad as ever. And you can go back and listen to one of the other uh, lists of that if you really want a refresher on why the dating in Denver sucks. Um Focus on the new batch. Focus on the new batch of misery for this year. Anyway, to flip into a little bit of positivity, as we record this, we're still in a new year. If you're listening to this at the end of the year, catch up. Um, and one you know, general theme that, that everybody um, hopefully goes into is a bit of a renewed spirit, renewed energy, renewed hope, renewed vision, and how they're going to change things in their lives um, or in their mindset to to feel better and to take on new challenges, which not only applies to dating, but it applies to relationship you might be in. It might uh, apply to workplace. It might apply to, I want to run a marathon, all kinds of things. But we're going to talk about something that I have not touched on in the show in probably five or six years. Um, And people are like, oh, are you going to talk about outer beauty? Not really. I'm going to talk about the mix of what changing your appearance or making some um, cosmetic changes might do to really jumpstart your confidence, boost your ego, and hopefully give you new opportunities. And I brought in a pro to do this. We got a doctor in the house. Uh, She is the Slimming Surgeon. She is the host of the Slimming Surgeon podcast. She's very acclaimed. She's an Alabama girl, even though she's War Eagle doctor. Mm -hmm. Candice Kickler, how are you? I'm amazing. Thank you, Brian, for having me. I always feel better talking to a woman... Uh, about this stuff, because I I think, you know, and and we're going to deal with mostly women. This is probably a stereotype, but women tend to do cosmetic procedures and fillers more than men, although that is changing, but it is still women. I always think if I was going to do it now as a woman, a male plastic surgeon uh, knows how I want to look, but a woman knows how I want to feel. A hundred percent. And I think that's a huge advantage. It's still a pretty male dominated field, right? But that is also changing a little bit. It is. Most plastic surgeons today are still male and they all still tell you how you should look versus someone who's a, a woman, but Mm -hmm. B had plastic surgery. It's Mm -hmm. like, I kind of know what they're going through. Right. And the why, and not only the before and after, like the mindset people, women go through, you know, different mindsets in their teens and twenties and thirties and post-divorce and post kids and post kids. And there's all kinds of things, you know, to sort of deal with that. When did you become interested in this, um, not just personally, but as like, I want to make a career out of this? Well, okay. If we think about when I wanted to make a career out of this, that would have been, I don't know, maybe like 10 years ago or so, like in Mm -hmm. my training or or actually kind of pre-training because I initially thought I wanted to be a dermatologist and just do like injectables, like Mm -hmm. the Botox, the fillers, the things like that. Um, but then I realized I was a surgeon. Right. And like, once you know you're a surgeon, you're a surgeon. So it kind of went And how do you know you're there. a surgeon? You're just good at it. You like to cut shit up? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I didn't know. Like I said, I didn't anticipate being a surgeon. But day one of the anatomy lab in medical school, I was paired with three other guys in my like cadaver group. 
And I was like, yo, I'm going to cut first. Like, oh. And I don't even know why I had that like instinct to do that. But I was like, boys, step out of the way. This Candace is my job. butcher's hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, we would never say that. But <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, it's always kind of been like a passion of mine, beauty and um, confidence boosting and wellness. But then I'm a surgeon too. So plastic surgery was the ultimate path. You are a Southern woman. I think that matters too. The old line about the uh, Southern woman goes to sleep with jewelry in case she dies in her sleep. She has jewelry on. Remember that at makeup? A hundred percent. That's a, that's a thing. Like no, nine, it's really a thing. Nine years old. I, I, somebody I talked to me about this. I thought she's like nine years old. I saw Dolly Parton on TV and I'm like, she, she puts out a look and I want to have a look. You know, totally. So funny story. When I was young, I had an older cousin who I thought was like amazing and beautiful. And she said, I never go to bed without eyeshadow on because you never know if the house is going to burn down and the firefighter is going to be cute. (laughs) And I remember that. And I did the same thing. (laughs) I I agree. That makes sense. Um, Wanting to look good has always been pretty much everywhere in America, but until probably 20 years ago, maybe a little bit less, things like fillers and Botox were really seen as a New York, LA, Miami thing. The, uh, the amount of sort of mainstream, um, you know, there's med spas all over every small town America now. What do you think changed that, that made it sort of like it wasn't either a taboo topic or it wasn't seen as something exclusively for, you know, wealthy people? Right. So you're, so right. And that it was really taboo before. Like it was something that you never wanted anyone to know that you did. Right. You hid it from your friends because people would judge people for it. I don't know exactly what shifted, but I will tell you now people look to these procedures as like a badge of honor, Mm -hmm. as a social status symbol, and they're happy to tell people about it. They want people to know. And that's where we get the overdone look because Mm -hmm. it's like, I want people to know I did my lips. I want people to know I have breast implants. Whereas before it was much more conservative and you didn't want anyone to know and you wanted to just be born like that. I think the Kardashians changed the world. For sure. Oh yeah, that made a huge, a huge impact. Whether it's a body type or just all of them being so open about things they were doing or wanting to do. You know, they just did a lot of things like this is how we do it. And you can even look at it like even, you know, interracial dating. It was yes. never really, it was just something that they did and they're open about it. And it really broke down, you know, you can say what you want about them. Yeah. It broke down a lot of walls societally for people that made it sort of mainstream that it wasn't this, you know, remember the show Ab Fab, the absolutely fabulous, where it was like the two British women like talking about Botox and drinking cocktails. And it was like, oh, they're out there on the on the fringes. Mm-hmm. And that's very Beverly Hills. But for it to get into sort of the Midwest and small town America where women are like, I do want to look good. And I most importantly, I do want to feel good. Mm-hmm. You know, the men are always, we always want to be like, oh, you're doing it for us. No, you're not. No, no. Most of the people are doing it for themselves. Like there's the added bonus that Mm -hmm. it's going to make you look good to other people, Mm -hmm. but it's really more of a, what am I seeing in the mirror that I don't like that is nagging at me every single day that I want to just change. And that's, that's my patience. And, and the trickle down of this, we say almost everything in dating relationships comes to, comes down to confidence and communication or some combo platter of that. What it does you bring up uh, just how you feel about your body, how you feel in your clothes, the way you stand up, the way you present yourself to the world, the way you hold your head higher. Um, if you're confident in your neck, the way you take a picture, everything trickles down and then you're putting that positivity out to potential suitors, partners, the world, all of it. It really can change a lot more than, oh, I look a little bit prettier, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, even if you're in a relationship, it changes that dynamic dramatically. Like recently I had a a girl, she, you know, had a baby, she breastfed, her breasts were saggy afterwards. She got implants and Mm -hmm. she's like, my sex life is amazing now. Like, I feel so good about myself. I am like, I'm back to the me I was when I first met my husband. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for like the single people and for dating and like to make yourself look attractive to a new person. It can be for the person you've been with for 20 years. Women now just openly putting on Facebook, like, hey, going in for the mommy makeover. Like it has the cute time. Everybody's fine with it now. 
you brought up something though on the partner or having the baby. What do you do if you're the man and she says, do you think I need to get my boobs done? How do you answer that? That is a tough question. <laughs> it's, it depends on the woman. If you know your wife or your significant other is going to take like severe offense to that and never let you live it down, then say nothing. And just say, you do what makes you feel happy, honey. But you know, there's also some women who need a little nudge and who just don't really know that it is that easy, that you can just go get a breast lift and Mm -hmm. feel a little bit better about yourself and look better in clothing and, you know, have that renewed sense of confidence. So sometimes it does take the husband being like, yeah, honey, I think that'd look amazing on you. Yeah. Is there, so you were a, you were a doctor before you got anything done or you got something done and then you're a doctor, not to get too much into your personal. I got, I mean, well, I got my breast, I got my breast implants done when I was in medical school. So I was like kind of a doctor, but like not practicing yet. Um, so that was interesting because I like interviewed doctors knowing kind of what they do and how they think. Right. And yeah, it was kind of along the pathway. Um, but, you know, going through it has to help you as a doctor. Yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. Because I can tell them, oh, yeah, you know, this is how you're going to feel. And I've also had a C-section, which like a lot of women these days have had. And so I can compare, oh, you know, like this is going to be worse than the C-section. This is going to be less worse than mm-hmm. the C-section. So because a lot of people, that may be the only procedure they've ever had done, the only like surgery they've had. So and a C-section is kind of painful. So if what I do is less painful, yeah. it's like, OK, we can do this. A lot of women are like, oh, I would never do that. I'm like, don't you color your hair? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, it's all in that same family. <laughs> you know, it's all the same thing. Uh, slippery slope. All right. Yeah. I, I got a million more <laughs> questions for you. Um, we're going to take a deep dive. I got to take a quick break um, so I can pay for um, Botox for myself or others down the road. Uh, I'm with Dr. Candice. We are talking about all things feeling better in 2024. And we will be back right after this. <laughs> What has changed um, the most since you've been doing this? Is there a certain procedure that, or a certain thing that people want? Is it mostly fillers now that, that have become an explosion? or Fillers have definitely gone on the rise. And that is a little bit of kind of COVID happening where people weren't as into doing surgery because they were fearful of you know, maybe having a definitive procedure around these uncertain times, maybe financially they were a little worried because they lost a job or Mm -hmm. they were getting new jobs or whatever it may be. And it's like back when there was that old, you know, I'm going to like date myself here, but like when there was the recession before lipstick prices like went through the roof because it was like something to make you feel good, but it wasn't too expensive. Right. Okay. So filler is kind of that lipstick Mm -hmm. of this era. And yeah, so it has definitely gone on the rise and it's non-invasive. Like you pop in, you get your filler, you go home. Nobody really needs to know, but you look good versus a surgery. You know, there is more downtime. Surgical wise, we've seen kind of like the fallout of the BBL. So it was like really, really big Mm -hmm. five years ago ish in the past couple of years with the Kardashians, Mm -hmm. obviously kind of booming that, which by the way, they've definitely had BBLs and most likely they've had more than one round. So they've had lipo a couple times with the fat transfer a couple times to get those angles. Uh Anyways, um, But that's falling out of favor. People want to be skinny again. They want to be straight. They want to have like a small butt, but they want to have boobs. Oh, the big butts out? Big butts are out. (laughs) I'm I'm reversing BBLs. I'm taking them. Yes, I'm taking the fat out of the butt on people. And also people are tending to get smaller breasts too, which I like big boobs. So, you know, whatever. And And because they just want... They just want to feel more petite, I think. I think hmm. that that's the new... I think that look is coming back. We're not going to get like Kate Moss vibes. Right. Like We're not going to go all the way there. But people want to be a little bit less curvy than they had in the past like five to 10 years, for sure. Uh, the biggest explosion in this um, is women in their 40s? Or was that always the target, the demo of people like... Uh, who is the most likely to, to get a procedure done 10 years? Is it people who wanted to get a husband or somebody who's trying to come out of a... It's more like that midlife, that 40-ish era, uh-huh. because it's either they're having a midlife crisis, 
they're getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. They're kind of re restarting their life. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely that population because that population tends to be able to more afford stuff as well. You know, like in your twenties, your early thirties, you're getting a breast dog right? and that's it. But the people that are doing the real transformations, you know, they've got some money in the bank mm -hmm. and they've lived a life and they just want to keep feeling good and looking good. So they're, they're willing to make the investment. So somebody comes in for a consult with you. How much are you focusing on? What are your goals? What are you, why are you trying to get to, how much do you have to play like therapist on this? How much do you have <laughs> to do that versus focusing on what is the aesthetic you want? It's, you know, surprisingly, it's kind of self-selecting. Like I don't tend to get that many people who are like way off their rocker. I want my husband to look at me again. Do they yeah, say that? Or no, you don't want to know? Well, kind of. <laughs> in, in some words, they say that to some degree, but it's not like the really, I, I don't get that many people who have the severe body dysmorphia who want like these dramatic changes, like want to look like a whole different human and want to look like a literal Barbie. We right. don't really see that. Those people, I don't know where they go, but they don't come to me. Thank God. Um, it's more so focusing on what you're trying to achieve. And also you got to think about where you start and where you want to be like, because not everything is possible. Like mm -hmm. the other day I had a girl and she's like, she was very overweight and she had very, very, very large breasts. And she was looking at our slideshow of before and afters. And she kept picturing or saying, Oh, I like those. I like those of people who are like totally different body type people who didn't need a lift where she needed a lift. And it's like, okay, we're going to have a come to Jesus. Like that's not necessarily what your result is going to be, but we can make you look better. Mm -hmm. And so it is a lot of focusing on the aesthetic and where we can get you. We've had, um, especially when we used to record a lot in Hollywood on this podcast, we've had a lot of women who were, who came in and did the podcast fresh off of something. And you know, they won't mind if I name the names like Brandy Glanville came in and she could barely talk because she had just come. She was all filled <laughs> up. Stassi Schroeder came in and she had to have a breast reduction. And I kind of made the crack. Like a lot of times they grow back and she was mad and then they did, you know, oh God. <laughs> they do like the they body do. is, they do they like do. hormones. Yeah. You it's can't control you. it. It's right. not right. And so a lot of people, you know, people are like, you're trying to live life. What I'm getting at is the two barriers to entry. I think that people have is a cost and b recovery time. They have no idea how long that's going to take. And that really depends on who you are, your lifestyle, how in shape you were going in all of that. Right. Isn't it like any Procedure? Totally. Totally. I mean, and it depends on like your pain tolerance, like what you're trying to do when you're trying to do it. Like another example, sorry, this is gonna be like the podcast of examples, but like yes. I was talking to a girl the other day, she's a CrossFitter and she's like, Oh, I want to exchange my implants and da, 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 da. And I'm like, girl, are you going to be able to stop CrossFitting for a month? Because like, that's your, that's your religion. And if I stop your religion, are you going to be okay? <laughs> you know? Right. So you have to think about what you want to do and when you want to do it. Um, but in general, most of the things that I do are not a huge amount of downtime. It's like gone in a blink of an eye and mo like everyone's happy that they did it after the fact. Do, um, brides do it? Do people do stuff getting oh, ready yeah. for the, oh yeah? Oh yeah. It's, so you got to time that out properly. You do. <laughs> and it's it, the bride thing. It's more so the mother of the bride. Because oh. the mother of the bride want to, wants to look like the sister of the bride. <laughs> so they're coming in for their facelifts uh -huh. and maybe their breast, maybe some liposuction, tummy tucks. Like, oh yeah, there's a mad dash to get in before the wedding. Like once that ring is on, they're mm -hmm. like, okay, when, we, when can I play my surgery? Yeah. Oh my God. I guess that's probably <laughs> true. Um, there is a trend because I've talked to parents about this, that as soon as she turns 14, 16, 18, she thinks she should have a body like something she's seen on TV. And naturally she's not developed. She's going to college. Like all of these things are going to happen. How do you have that conversation? And there's a lot of parents who are like, listen, she's 16. She feels she's the skinniest, scrawniest one. If I, and we think it would change her confidence so much if she just got boobs at 16, you know? Yeah. You know, I tend to say, wait a little bit longer, like more like 18. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit better. They're a little bit more developed. They're a little more matured and they're able to like understand and comprehend that decision. 
I would say rhinoplasty is a little bit different, though. With a lot of bat mitzvah South, gifts. Exactly. <laughs> South Florida. If you haven't had your nose done, you know you're not from South Florida. Okay? And <laughs> yeah, LA and New York were like that, too. A lot of bandages of 14-year-olds. Yeah, right yeah. So that's a different story. And that, you know, I think is appropriate. And a lot of the little girls have been thinking about forever. And it does make a huge difference. But the breast, I think that needs a little bit more thought. Because like I said, people are trending towards smaller breasts these days. So not everybody wants the implant look anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of girls are walking around with no bra and they love, they kind of like that flat look, whatever it may be. It may be what it may be. (laughs) You're like, I'm not familiar with it, but yes. I, I died to get my breast, not really, but I obviously like getting my breast implants was like the best decision of my life. I have a podcast about it. It was it, like yeah. life changing. I, I've heard a lot and I heard <laughs> your podcast that you did about that. And, and it was such a, that's why I bring up this confidence thing, like what it did for the, beyond the aesthetic of it, yeah. it just made you feel more feminine. It just made you yes. feel different. Like a woman. Made you feel like a woman. Yeah. Definitely. So, you know, you got to make sure it is the right time that the person is ready. So if they're really young, you know, they definitely need to wait a little bit. But do you recommend if somebody's not has never done anything before to like just do this? Because some people come in and they're like, I want these nine things. I will just suck it up and have one bad month versus doing that. Or is it just depend on the person? Totally depends on the person. Like we have done so many, you know, big transformations like before weddings and things like that on women who've done nothing, Mm -hmm. but they're super happy and they're super happy. They did it all at once, you know? And so there can be good outcomes, but also at the same time, like, you know, if this is somebody who doesn't tolerate pain well or doesn't tolerate change well, then it might be good to stage it. Like, let's start with your breast and then we'll do your tummy or let's start with some filler and then we'll do, you know, surgery. It just depends on the person. Uh, Are people still doing the lips or the lips are... Lips are still in. Oh, yeah. Already lips left and right. We, the, they the, want them bigger. They want them smaller. They want them lifted. They want them flipped. A li- flipped? What is a flipped lip? I have a lip flip right now. So oh. I just did it. So you put a little Botox uh-huh. in the top of the lip because the muscle that's around our mouth kind of like makes our mouth push down and can make it look longer. So instead of getting filler over and over again, you can do a little lip flip and it'll flip the lip out so it looks bigger, but it's not crazy. You're looking at me like no, it's crazy. I'm not. No, I, I was thinking of, we, we had the, the last time we had a, a plastic surgeon on this, which was a long time ago. It was in LA. And I was talking about like, a lot of times I'm not sure that the lips look better. And he goes, you only notice the bad ones. True. He goes, there's, he goes, you have no idea how many people are getting their lips done and you don't yeah. notice because they look natural and amazing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, lips are still a thing for sure. They're still a thing. What is a thing that, um, Men, let's talk about the men for a second because men are doing more things and yes. men are certainly getting fillers and, and they mm-hmm. certainly do want to look younger. And a lot of women are very encouraging of that too. Still the confidence thing, you know, mm-hmm. men are afraid of losing their hair and then there's a slippery slope from there. Yeah. What, what are, are men looking to get the same thing out of it or men are like, I need to look younger for my job or is it really about the wife and the dating and I want a young girlfriend or any of that? I think it's more so like they don't want to age they do want to still look young, but I mean, it it's kind of like this, you know, paradigm because they want to have like the salt and pepper hair, you know, like they want to look she like a little me. rugged, she you know, they do. Well, whatever. <laughs> so they want to have a little salt and pepper, but yeah. they want to look like rugged. Like they want the jawline. They want the sharp angles. They want to have like a little liposuction under their chin. They'll, they'll come to me if they've got man boobs mm-hmm. and we liposuction the man boobs. Um, or if they've got like a tummy that hangs over their pants, then we'll do either some liposuction or like we, we don't call it a tummy tuck on a man. I call it an abdominoplasty. It's much more masculine. They don't look at me like I'm crazy and it takes care of business. So yeah, they're still doing (laughs) stuff, but it's, it's focused on a different aesthetic, you know? You brought up the the chin. What is the technical term for this thing? The submental liposuction. So like the your turkey gobbler area. If that's what you want to call it, yes. Yeah. The yeah. gobbler. So it's either, if it's skin, then you might need a lift. And we don't call it a facelift. We call it a lift. You just know, a lift. Just, just a little lift. You just need a little lift. No big deal. Um, but if it's fat, then it's suctioning it. So liposuction. Yeah. Is it, is ultrasound work or it doesn't work? Uh, not, not, yes and no. I mean, it can. Yeah, there's, there's like the, modalities that you can add with Kybella? the liposuction. What is that? Kybella is an injectable. It can help too. That's like more of the non invasive route. So, yeah, there are options, but 
a lot of men are focusing on the jawline. Is it permanent? Kybella's permanent. Or any of the procedures. Lipo- yeah, can they're, you be all, like, they're all pretty much permanent. You can give me a 10-year jawline. Yeah. Kind of, you can? Yeah. And most likely, you're looking at me now like, what's going on? <laughs> that is a, that is li- like, you're like, it's probably fat. That's. Like uh, a little bit a of, lift? we call it submental liposuction, if we're just going to liposuction it. But if it's loose skin, then you need a lift. Like a, basically a face slash neck lift. So that's going to be a little bit more downtime, you know, well, things like that. How much downtime? At a month, you can do anything you want and you look amazing, but you got to backtrack from there. Like seven to 10 days, you're going to be bruised. You're going to have some swelling. You, you need eat? to wear a head wrap. Yeah, you can eat. You can eat like the next day. Oh, um, so I didn't know if it hurt to chew. No, but you're not going to go to like a steak restaurant <laughs> and eat an apple <laughs> off the okay. court. Okay, um, but yeah, no, it's not crazy downtime. It's just, you know, you're not going to plan an event within a week or two of mm-hmm. having a procedure done. Just in case you don't want people to notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you're if a guy's willing to be like, listen, you're going to be out of commission for a month, but after that, you're going to have a long run of a jawline. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then it's worth it. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, the, what did you call the stomach thing for the men? What do you call it? Abdominoplasty. Abdominoplasty. <laughs> it's, it's all sorts of possibilities here. Um, do you tell whoever it is, patients that like, listen, it's not going to be, people are like freak out mm-hmm. two weeks after, four weeks after, like, oh my mm-hmm. God, that's not what it's supposed to look like. It takes what, a year for things to fully settle or it depends on the procedure? Yeah, it depends on the procedure. I mean, most of the time by three months, most of your like acute swelling from the procedure is gone or minimal. So like you're seeing a lot of your results around the three month mark, but it could be, it could take six months. Like if you've already had something done, it might take a little longer at one year. You're definitely good. You're golden. Scars are really faded by that point, things like that. Um, but you see results much sooner, but what you mentioned, like that emotional roller coaster after a procedure is real. Like we literally give them a handout that talks about the emotional roller coaster after surgery because people will freak out. Like they I wish I didn't do it. A hundred percent. The scars freak people out, right? Yeah. Not, I mean, not always, but yes, it can. It, it all depends. Like everybody freaks out about something different. Um, but it does happen. It's normal and you get past it. That's which is what we kind of reiterate because and you give a lot of education on scar management or whatever you call it up front, right? Yes. And we, I like to see people frequently after mm-hmm. surgery because I like to see what's going on. I like to see where their head's at. I like to see what the scars are looking like and like, you know, manage anything as it comes up. So yeah, at all of those visits, I'm like, okay, now it's time to do this. Now it's time to do this. Maybe we're going to laser it. Maybe we're going to start doing some silicone band-aids, different things like that. Yeah, you manage it. The, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm so lost in all of these possible procedures <laughs> for myself now. I know. You know I just look at, so how is it, uh, I, uh, you know who Brooke Burke is? Mm-hmm. She's, I've known her for a long, long time. She used to be married to a very famous plastic surgeon, but she's like, I got most of my stuff done before him because I couldn't afford him. Yeah. But she's like, the thing about being married to a plastic surgeon is she goes, and she goes, this could be my imagination. I feel like he's always looking at me and other people like, oh, if uh, give me 10 minutes, I could fix that. I could do that. Is that, is that just natural? <laughs> Yes and no. I mean, if if the topic comes up, then definitely. But if it's, you know, if I'm just like having lunch with friends, I'm not like scanning the audience looking for candidates. But you do see things. Mm-hmm. You definitely see things. And I think it would be challenging to be married to someone who that's their line of work if you aren't confident in yourself. Like, right. It's just, I mean, it is what it is. Or, you know, she's just be like, he's around beautiful women all the time and I, yeah. she chooses me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Did you hear the story about the, I don't even know if we can talk about this, whatever it's in the news, the plastic surgeon in like Pensacola, Florida area, whose wife died on the table. Like he was his doing table? Some, his table. It was him and her apparently in the office alone, which is shady. Yeah. And like no staff members apparently there to witness or to assist or whatever. And yeah, she passed away. That's a little Frankenstein. It's really crazy. This does not happen just for the audience. <laughs> These types of things do not happen. That's like definitely some, I think foul play went down. Do people, you or other people, plan out like in five years I'm going to do this, in 10 years I'm going to do this, and and then like they have sort of a chart of where they want to look in life? Or are there celebrities 
that they come in. Used to, everybody went, used to want to look like Jennifer Aniston. That was sort of yes. the thing for a while. Yeah. Because she's has had stuff done, but she looks mm-hmm. like she hasn't. Right. That's always the goal. Um, and a lot of the real housewives changed all that too. They're very open about all their treatments or whatever. Are there like, and we brought up the Kardashians earlier, do people come in and be like, I want to have a nose like Scarlett Johansson. I want to, is there? Yeah. Today, a girl, I want my breasts to look like this M. Richata, whatever her name is, some really pretty model. And I was like, yeah, those are beautiful. She has a different body than you, but those are beautiful. <laughs> yeah, we do get that all the time. And it's really, again, about um, managing expectations. Like this is where you are. Mm-hmm. This is where you can be. You're not, Imrata or whatever her name right. is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you um virtually sort of yeah. AI show this is what you'll probably look like? Yes. There are there are some softwares that we have that you can do that, especially for breasts. Like mm-hmm. that's the most easy way to kind of show that stuff. You know, the liposuction, the tummy tuck, that kind of varies with how your body responds after a surgery and how you heal. Um, but yeah, I and I what I like to do is I like to show people Another person that I've operated on, who's obviously given consent to share photos, another person that looks like them. Mm Because it's like, you know, people have body types and it's like, okay, you're a pair. This girl was a pair. Right. This is where she started. You're pretty close to where she is. And this is where she is now. Mm -hmm. Expect a result similar to this. And they love that because it's like a more realistic depiction of what you could look like. Is there tough conversations that are just like, you're just like, I can't, I'm not a miracle worker. I can't turn you into size zero if you're 14 and you're six, two or, you know, whatever it is, Yeah, like you definitely. have to have re- reasonable expectations. How do you manage that conversation? I mean, I'm just honest with them and they're welcome to go get additional, you know, opinions. Yeah. And if those people are legit, they'll tell them the same thing, but it's like, you know, I, I kind of describe it like, okay, you've had four or five babies one was a set of twins. Like your waist is not going to be a 22 inches. Like it's just not like I can tighten your muscles like as much as I can, but it's just, it's not your body shape any Mm -hmm. longer. Um, or the same thing with the breasts. Like if you start really, really, really small, you're not going to get really, really, really big unless we kind of like do implants in a, in like stages, like start with a one set and Mm -hmm. then as your skin stretches, do another set, things like that. Um, but most people are really, open to hearing what I have to say and appreciate the opinion. I tell a lot of women this because I hear it all the time. I don't want to ever hear a woman give the qualifier when she's trying to compliment herself. Like, not bad for two kids, not bad for 48. Just leave it as I look good. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Too many do that. Like, you're Mm -hmm. doing it yourself and you're putting it out to the world that they should somehow lower the ceiling of possibilities for you. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm actually bad about that because people tell me, oh, you look so amazing. And I'm like... Yeah, but not as good as I could. You know, like I'm always like, I think I think like that too. I think it's like a woman thing, but we need to just say thank you, period. Yeah, or you should just be like, this is who I am and I've never looked better. Yeah, I've exactly. I've never felt better. And, and that is the thing you hear a lot now. You know, uh, people go through all sorts of, you could probably look amazing at 22 and if you're not confident in it and you are shrugging your shoulders and you're slumping and whatever, and then yeah. one day you may not be exactly the same body type as you were then. And at 48, you were just rocking it, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. And that's some people get better with age. That's a journey. Yeah. And we're all on a journey, but if you're putting out that to bring this back to sort of the, whether it's dating or you're in a relationship, they're going to pick up the vibes of how you feel about yourself and they're going to respond to that. So whatever you have to do to get into that position where you can feel good about yourself, whether that is working out or dieting or coloring your hair or, implants or whatever you got to do, try and get yourself to whatever gets you comfortable that this is the best version of you can, that you can be, you know, inside and outside. Right. And own it. Yeah. Yeah. I I, agree. This is what I do and I do it for me and it's going to make you like me better. Yeah. I've never had like a big issue with confidence, but like one of my sisters has, and it's so crazy to see the difference in like how we interact with people and men and things like that. It's wild. And it's like, I'm so glad I have this. I don't know how, why I have it, but I just do. And it's like, my yeah. sister equally is beautiful, like amazing, sweet girl. And she just doesn't have the same like oomph. Yeah. I know two sisters. The pretty one is the, is the not confident That's one. That's what the, I'm saying. And it's weird. And I'm just like, wait, how did this happen? And, and you could tell that the prettier one's jealous of the personality uh, one, or the one who has like, and it's not personality. It's really a, just a confidence. Like this is yeah. who I am and it makes her more attractive. Yeah, for sure. Know? For sure. 
All right, I'm going to let you plug whatever you want to plug, but this is your first time on the podcast. I can go on and ask. <laughs> we play something called Worst Date or First Date. Mm-hmm. So you have to think back to your swinging single days and give us either the worst date you've ever been on or the very best first date you ever went on. Your choice. Okay. I, I Since I've listened to your podcast, I'm <laughs> somewhat prepared for this, but not really because I have a horrible memory. So like, I really don't remember. That's good. You block a, out the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember a worst date really per se. So I'm going to go with my best like first date, which mm-hmm. would be, I know this is sound cheesy with my husband, but not because like that was so amazing. I mean, we had great chemistry, obviously we're well, married now, right. but, um, we, <laughs> we were in West Palm. We met at, for dinner at sushi. And at the time I had this really cool car. I had a black Dodge Challenger, like the sporty like car. A full muscle car. Oh yeah. yeah. Which like, why did I own that? I don't know, but I did. And it was amazing. And we went like speeding in the car on 95 after the date. Oh wow. Do not recommend. Totally illegal. Yeah, you're illegal. the ones, huh? That's, that's a very Florida thing to do. I know. Let's open this thing up on 95. But that was like a really good first date, I guess. Wait, so, yeah. you, so you were driving? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ballsy. Yeah, I think that's cool. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to trust him to drive. I didn't know if he's know. a good driver that's or a bad driver. Like, sit over there. You can see what they can handle. <laughs> that is an interesting first date. I kind of like that. That's not, I don't recommend that. Right, find right. A closed road somewhere, but that's not bad. All right. Tell everybody how they can find you and your podcast and all that stuff. Yes, please uh, follow me on Instagram at Slimming Surgeon. Um, my podcast is The Slimming Surgeon Podcast. And. Feel free to message me, DM me. I love responding to literally everyone. It's it's really me on the other side. Good job. This is fun. So fun. Thank you. Uh, as far as us and Slimming Surgeon, please like, share, follow, and review uh, this podcast, that podcast, and all the podcasts you like. Your reviews still, after all this time, mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem. Shoot us an email, greatlovedebate at gmail.com. Don't send me any more emails about is Seattle a bad place to date it is shoot us an email if you have a question for candace or anything else or if you had a procedure that you really changed your dating uh world shoot us an email great love debate at gmail.com tickets for our 10th anniversary live show live is right here in south florida at the boca black box center for the arts it is on february 6th it's going to be a big big uh extravaganza um i think there's tickets left a lot of tickets are gone uh that's february 6th boca black you can go to boca black box.com you can go to great love debate.com for tickets to that and everything else because as always at the great love debate we never stop making love see you next time Love debate.